ambulance service and tell me exactly what's happened, please. Um, we need an ambulance. Her man's collapsed. Okay, can you tell me your exact address, please? Uh, we're at a bus stop on, um, Cannon... Road. Cannon's Road. Don't worry, help is on the way. Is the patient breathing? No, no, he's not breathing. Um, someone's giving him CPR now. We'd been to the hospital that day. As we stood at the bus stop, um, I just said to Graham, our bus is coming next. And I stepped forward uh, to see if it was coming around the corner and without any sound, Graham head dived into the road. Uh, there was an awful crash as his head hit the uh, concrete. And immediately a car pulled from the other side of the road and a man and his son got out and they lifted Graham out of the gutter and got him onto the pavement. They uh, turned him over onto his back and started CPR. We was on scene uh, approximately seven minutes from the time of call. Obviously we established very quickly the patient was in cardiac arrest. We provided two shocks via the defibrillator. And there was no response, so they put my daughter and I into the ambulance, suggested we sat in the ambulance. And I received a phone call from Wendy asking me would we pray People care a great deal about Graham and Janet and were really concerned that they would be okay and for the family too. And so people began to pray. A doctor, Anna Vondy, was on scene and assisted us in getting the patient off the floor. It was quite difficult because um, in Graham's case we couldn't get a line in that we needed to give him some essential drugs. It took quite a few times and I didn't think we'd be able to manage it. but. You've just got to keep going. He still wasn't breathing for himself and his heart wasn't beating for itself either. I just thought, I'm just gonna give this just one more go. If it's his time to die, then that's fine. He can go to heaven with you. But if it's not his time to die, you just need to be in charge of the whole situation. Okay, so my name is Graham Horton. I'm a retired clergyman. I've had a very full life, a very happy life, but that life came abruptly to an end one day at a bus stop, and I was dead for a long time. The last thing I remember was saying to my wife, we'll go home and have a nice quiet evening, and then, that was it, I was gone. A bit of history is that no one in my family of the male line has lived to survive their 66th birthday, and I was 66. I was expecting to die of cancer, like my father, like my brother, uh, but a cardiac arrest came totally out the blue, and really, that was a shock to me which actually caused me to be more humble, uh, that God had a plan, even though I didn't know what it was. My wife spoke about uh, a man supervising at the scene of, of my collapse. Uh, I was unaware physically of my surroundings, but I was aware of a man had his arms folded, but was just staring down at Graham like in a supervisor's way, as though he was making sure that everything was happening properly. Watching over me, I couldn't see my wife, I couldn't see these 50 odd strangers, but I saw this one man and he stayed with me and he just watched over me until here I am today. I want to thank him, I want to see him. Yeah. 
me and Aaron are both very proud of what we did that day. Um, we'd hope to think that, you know, everybody would do the same as what we did. We supported the family, passerbys. We did everything we could prior to getting help. And I'm proud. But now I believe God can do everything. And part of my pride, if you like, was being a problem solver. But this is one problem I couldn't solve. But you could. It was your prayer that carried me through. And I'm so humbly thankful to each one of you. And may God bless you. In the UK, there's over 35,000 cardiac arrests a year, whether it be in the community or at people's homes. In Mr Horton's case, um, he was just getting off the bus with his wife after going to hospital for an appointment. Um, less than one in ten of these people actually survive. God can use people. He used strangers on that day. What they did was beyond humanity. They actually helped. Uh, not a dying man, but a dead man on that day. Prayer works. To actually raise that person to life is something you don't hear of every day. But I'm here, and I'm here to say thank you to everyone who prayed. And just say, keep on praying. Keep on making a difference. Keep on changing lives. We need to hear more good news stories. Yeah. Amen. Like a nice one. Like a nice one. Yeah. I'm a pie. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did great. Thanks, Brad. You're that welcome.